Damn it. Welcome to our first example of proving divisibility. So this one's using a very interesting equation. Gee, I wonder if superscripts are going to come in problem. Yeah, anyway. Divisible by 57 for all non-negative integers of n. So let p, or let p of n equal what we just had, our base case, we're allowed to use non-negative integers. So in reality, it could have actually used 0 in this one. So just, just heads up on the wording of that. Uh, if I would have done one, you know what, I'll have you try doing one instead and see if it works out. But the lowest non-negative integer is actually zero, so that's why we're doing that. We go ahead and place in zero and all in the powers, and we have send to the squared plus eight to the first, which is still 49 plus eight, and there it is. Notice I am the one that put in the modulus 57 equals to zero, because as you know, modulus means first that we divide it, and then we check the remainder. And if it's divisible, that means our remainder is going to equal zero. So I am the one that added that. You're not going to see that in the book and probably a lot of examples that are out there too. So just a heads up. In our hy inductive hypothesis, since our base case is good so far, this is just the same equation, just with k's in there. But I'm going to have to show that now with k plus 1 on both sides, we're going to have 7k plus 3 and 8 2k plus 3 modulus 57 is going to equal 0. Now, there's not a lot of meat on that bone, and not a lot of us like working with exponents. So here's what's going to happen is, is I'm going to use a build up, meaning I'm going to go from our base case, which is really this, and then try to do some manipulation so that we can end up having it be in that form when we're all said and done to have our portion still be modulus of 57. So how am I going to do that? Well, first, I need, let me worry about the left-hand side first. For the left-hand side, I already have 7k plus 2, but I need to have 7k plus 3. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to add one more k. Now, how do I add one more k to make 7k plus 3? Well, there's that darn exponent property again. All I need to do is add a 7 to the first power, just 7 by itself, in order to go ahead and do that. So let's take a look what that looks like. So on both of these, what am I going to do here is that, well, I need one more k for the 7 to make it, well, k plus 3. And I need two more over this side just to make it 3. So, so what I'm going to do is, darn that exponent property, um, from 1, I'm just going to add 7 to the power of 1, which is still 7, to make one side equal that, and then 8 squared to get my 3 instead of just my 1. So how is that going to look? So this is what it's going to look like. So we have that 7, 7 to the first, or just 7, times 7k plus, or k plus 2 to the power there, and you'll read the rest there. Now, remember that form that I was trying to get into place here? I'm trying to get one side to look like this and the other side to look like, a, well, a form of 57 times. So notice I am doing this on purpose to try to get that form that I originally had and that we're going to use and exploit here in a moment. So this is what it would look like if I didn't do any trickery, and yes, I am going to have to do trickery. I mean, all I'm doing is basically combining two values to get my 7K. So th this is some trickery here. While this looks like it's done, I still need to have something of that divisible by 57 in order to do all of this and to get it into that form that I really want. So this doesn't prove it quite yet. Here's where the trickery starts to happen. Again, I'm looking for that form that's popping up here. And yes, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting pretty darn close. I'll be darned, but at 8 squared, if I, you know, that's 64. If I only broke that up into this, it doesn't that equal 64? Did I break any rules by doing this? And the answer is no. And by the way, there's no coincidence that's going to be interesting for me here. That 57 matches that 57 right there. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, the other spot's 7. Hmm. This is not by coincidence. And you're going to see another problem that does the exact same darn thing. 
So just heads up on that. So all I've done is rewritten, replace the 8 squared with something about 57 because I'm about to get it into that form where I say 57 times something something. Hey, if it's divisible, it can be multiplied by 57, then it can be divided by 57. That's what's going to happen next. All I've done in the next step is go ahead and multiply, because this is an addition, we have two different factors here, 7 times 8, it's a subscript of 2k plus 1 to the power of that, and 57 times 8 times the, to the power of 2k plus 1. Whew. That's all I've done is fold it out. Now, why did I do that? <laughs> the form. Now the form's coming into play. I've got seven. I've pulled seven from a couple of different items that I wanted to pull from. It was seven times this and seven times that. All I've made is seven times both of the, That's exact equation. Notice I haven't touched anything from back here yet. That's one form of the equation. And now I can basically say both sides are divisible by 57. Now why? On the left-hand side, I already proved this particular portion in my base case was divisible by 57. So this part, check. This part, manually, it's divisible by 57 because I multiplied it by 57. So I should be able to divide the sucker by 57. So both sides end up literally being, one's the inductive hypothesis that we just did before using the base case. The other one is literally manually because 57 times. So notice it fits that form that I've been highlighting the whole entire time just to get it into basically we can say, hey, both sides have been proven to be divided by or divisible by 57 in this particular case. A lot of manipulation in order to do this. But again, using that form, we need to think of what we can do to get it into that well form. That's the manipulation that we need to do. So a couple of suggestions that I have is, frankly, you know this must show is, is it, you're really breaking it down into two parts. So the must show on this one isn't as helpful because, again, you wanted to really show that form in order to prove that both sides are. I'll just leave it at that for now. I would write out what this would look like for the next problem first, so then you know what to aim for in our division because our next problem is going to look very similar to what we just did here. I almost forgot. <laughs> the therefore part. This is basically what I just explained, is that both parts are divisible by 57. The first part, we did that in our base case, is divisible, divisible by 57. And then the 57 times whatever it would have been is divisible by 57. So that makes that whole entire equation divisible by 57. You use an induction, we prove that. And then that's the rest of the language that you need for the therefore. So finally, we are done that problem. Let's go to our next one. It's going to look very, very similar